نحمده و نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يبقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد <coughs> الحمد لله نزاكم الله خيرا uh, for all of you coming to the class uh, on time ما شاء الله مي الله سبحانه وتعالى put baraka in your time and in your lives الحمد لله الحمد لله we are on day 18 Yes, Jazakumullah Khairan, I have um, started the recording. Barakallahu um, Fikum. Okay, uh, let's uh, get on to the class. I just wanted to test you all first. Who remembers what is Al Ajz? Al Ajz. So when someone is suffering from Al Ajz, what are they? Okay, is it a worry? It is helplessness, inability to do something. So th can that be possible that they are suffering from an illness? What do you think? No, it's, no, 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 no. Sorrow of the past we've done, okay? That is hazan. Um, that can include illness. Can that include that a person, um, for example, a woman, uh, she is pregnant and she's in her, in the first trimester, so she feels very tired. Can we say that she's suffering from al Yes, yes, yes. But does, now the thing is, but the thing is that she doesn't need to feel disheartened. Why? Because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, a believer is, it becomes ill and is not able to do the good deeds that they used to do, then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the angels to write whatever they used to do before, that is written for them, okay? So don't, don't you feel taken aback that I am, I'm, I'm not able to do as many good deeds. The condition is, had you been doing those good deeds before and you're not able to do now, then you will be, it will be written for you for every day that you used to do. If you used to do uh, extra sunnah prayers, extra, uh, you know, extra recitation of the Quran, or you used to do some charity work, everything is going to be written for you as you used to do. Okay, so don't, um, uh, do, don't start feeling sad and depressed that, oh, I'm suffering from al -Ajz. Okay, yes, it is related to the body. Yeah, so this person who is suffering from al -Ajz, they want to do good deeds, but they are not able to, okay? And Al-Kasl, Al-Kasl, what is Al-Kasl? Laziness. So is their body able? Is their body able? Yes, they are able. But what is the problem? Problem is lying somewhere in the willpower, in the heart. Yeah? Yes, in the heart. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So the people who, um, you know, who wrote to me that they are not able, they are not able to do as many good deeds as they used to because of an illness. May, my dua for you is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give you shifa, complete shifa from whatever you're suffering and allow you to do good deeds uh, in a manner that he's pleased with you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah write this time that you spend uh, remembering Allah and feeling remorseful. Uh, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, write that as your good deed. Okay? Alhamdulillah. All right. Next we did was al-bukhl. What is al-bukhl? I'm going to ch close the chats now. Okay. Miserliness, stinginess. But you know, we have to be very careful. Stingy, yeah? And while well, jubna is cowardice. I wanted to speak on um, 
because yesterday we didn't have enough time. Remember I told you the hadith that stinginess and iman never come together in the heart of the believer. So if you have increased iman, then you are going to be less stingier. Your, your stinginess is going to decrease and vice versa. So, and this is going to be for every type of good, for every type of good, that is the case. And then I spoke to you about the hadith um, that none of you truly believes until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Now, I want you to pay attention and listen to me uh, about this important thing, because this is coming under the chapter, under the heading of al bukhtul And uh, me and you, each one of us has to assess, are we suffering from this? Okay? Right. But the careful, very important thing is that if we don't have, um, if we, we've not completed the obligatory part of the Iman, if we are suffering from, if we, you know, we don't like what we like for ourselves, we don't like for our brother. Iman, which is wajib, not the Iman which keeps you in Islam. Iman, which is wajib, which you need to fulfill. Okay, so you're not, so you're, so you're not sinful. Meaning, you are sinning until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Now take a moment back and ask yourself, do you love for your brother or sister in Islam what you love for yourself? I'll tell you what happens. People, they like to keep by themselves, you know, some very good, you know, whatever, a bag or a shoe or an outfit, they like to buy good quality. But when they give someone a gift, they give them the cheapest thing. Sometimes as much as I have seen people give gifts from the Poundland, you know, a pound gift. And I was just, and it's not that they don't have the money, they do, but they don't find it important that they should give good gifts. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that someone who does not have the means, then even that pound they've spent is a lot. But someone who is, they don't like for, the, their, for their brother what they like for themselves. And this is where we need to, you know, alarm bells start, should start ringing that you are not fulfilling your Iman. Okay, you are sinning if you're doing that. So whether it is passing knowledge, whether it is sharing the wealth, yeah, or, you know, sometimes what happens is we become jealous. We become jealous of certain people. Now, that is a disliked attitude. So what should you do? You should make dua for them. Okay? Um, and in the, in the last third of the night, make dua for them. Until that feeling of jealousy gets out of your heart. So are we actually, you know, doing this for the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or do we just think, okay, me and my family and nothing else? Do you extend your generosity to the outside, to the outside world apart from your family and yourself? Because this is generosity. If you're not being generous, you are being, you're doing bukhl. Right? Do, do you find that you do something good and you just reserve it for yourself and you make sure no one else gets it? And Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, every Muslim has a level of envy in their heart, but the mu'min controls his emotion. I've, I've spoken to you about this. No, 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 I'm not talking about bargains. You're able to get some good quality um, items in bargains. But you know when people just don't care and they will buy just a cheap stuff just and they'll wrap it up and give it to you? That's when, would you like to have it yourself? Ask yourself, if someone gave me this gift, would I be happy? Then sure, by all means, give it. Okay? Now, envy, 
you see, and you, did you hear what Ibn Taymiyyah said? Every Muslim has a level of envy in their heart, but the moment controls his emotion. And what do we do? We start making dua for them. Okay, why? Because envy can result in you giving evil eye to the person. So you see, you're not benefiting your Muslim brother or sister. So the cure is make dua for them in the last third of the night. Or if you don't do that, your iman will start getting weak because of the feelings that you have for that person. Yeah? You, you shouldn't be thinking, I want to be the one with the most knowledge or I want to be the one with the most wealth or I want to be the one with the most gold. You know, whatever materialistic gains that we have and people have the standards, you shouldn't be thinking. Instead, you should, you, should, you, you know, Islam encourages us that I want everyone to share the khair that I have. So these people, they spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? So people can work together and we can then relieve people from the hardships that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put them through. Yeah? So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wants us to complete the obligatory level of iman by the, by the saying that he's saying, love for your brother what you love for yourself. And can you imagine how strong our ummah would be if we all did this, if we all shared the khair that we had? Yeah, I just wanted to go through because I was feeling I didn't do justice to it. And then al-jubn is looked down upon, you know, in Islam it's looked down upon. Why? Remember I told you that this characteristic can lead to negative traits. This person can be dishonest. If he has, if he's a coward, he can be dishonest. He can be treacherous. Yeah. And how does it come about? Because this person has very little iman in their heart. Yeah. Or maybe they don't have the knowledge. Yeah. So for him, his personal gain or her personal gain at that moment is more important than doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to do. Yeah? Because cowardice means no knowledge, no knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cowardice, I'll tell you. Meaning, for example, this person, when they go out and they're in a non-Muslim country, they will not pray their salah because they don't want people to know they are Muslim because they feel that they're going to be discriminated, discriminated against or their Islam is going to harm them. So you see that this person is not uh, having a strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So this, and how did it come? If he knew that Allah is a razaq Allah is Al-Qadir, Allah is Al-Qadir, would he be scared of anyone? No, he would pray anywhere. He, you know, like some people, they go to the markets and then they don't, they miss all their salah because the salah happens to be, you know, if it's winter time, they miss their Zohar, they miss their Asr, they miss Maghrib and they come home at Isha time. And, and then they pray all the salah together because they say that we couldn't pray. Why, why could you not pray? Why could you not pray? Why could you not find a corner anywhere and pray your farm? You see, because they didn't have knowledge, right? So they were ignorant. May Allah protect us. Also, people show jubin. I personally think people show jubin because of peer pressure as well. And this pressure of the society. You know, the feeling that I'm being judged. What will people say? Yeah, then that you, you, we need to console our heart in saying that Allah is the protector. Allah honors whoever he wishes. We need to, as a class, we need to take an initiative to start studying the seerah. Learn, read about the life of the Sahaba. That will strengthen your iman because these are real life people. The celebrities that we have today, they are just fake, honestly, just fake. And they don't have any sense of character in them. So, it, you know, we need to look up in it, the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was happy with, uh, the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they are going to be going to Jannah. Then we can see, and you will, when you read the seerah in that way, believe me, you will say, Ya Rab, my problems are nothing. They went through so much, and yet I complain the most. Okay, so let's read this dua one more time. 
Yes, of course. Re remove fear. Yes, it can be recited to remove fear. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal hazm. So I've colored it so you know with the color coding that which ones are the pairs. Wal ajzi wal kasal. Wal jubni wal bukhl. Say it one more time, and then we're going to discuss the next two. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan, wal-ajzi wal-kasal, wal-jubni wal-bukhl. You know, whilst we're on al-ajz, you see, that is why Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already taught us that seek protection. So if you've sought protection, Allah will protect you from becoming helpless. Allah will protect you from not, you know, being able to do good deeds as you used to. Okay, may Allah protect us all from these evil characteristics. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start the seventh and the eighth characteristic. Now, this is, Bola means crooked, meaning, and dain means um, debt. So this person owes people money. Now, all of us can relate to that. A heavy burden, it feels like a, the debt seems a heavy burden on this person. And that is why Prophet ﷺ has taught us this dua to seek refuge from. Because what is going to happen is a person who has a lot of debt, do you think that they can offer salah the way they should? Do you think that they can um, do good deeds? All they're going to do is let me work two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. They won't have time for salah. Maybe they will, just a little bit, but they will not. They, their focus is just let me make money. So that is why it is important that we ask Allah to protect us from this. And also, when a person is in a lot of debt, you know, that person, how does that, how do they feel? They feel constricted. That's dain. They feel constricted. They feel that the whole world is closing upon them. And sadly, the person who owes money to people, they, they start telling a lot of lies, right? They start breaking promises. You see that taking debt, debt and being in debt ends in a very, very wrong path. And a person's every sin will be forgiven except debt. Even if the person were to die as a martyr, may Allah protect us from having debts. And all those of us who have debts, may Allah allow us to, you know, get rid of these debts. The Prophet ﷺ said, all the sins of a shaheed, a martyr, are forgiven except debt. So his his people who, are, who, leaves, who he leaves behind, they are going to make sure that they pay off because he will not be able to experience the, the happiness of being a martyr unless his debt has been paid off. In another narration, Prophet ﷺ said, being martyred in the cause of Allah expiates for everything except debt. And the Prophet ﷺ refused to offer the janazah for the person who was in debt. And mind you, that person owed very little amount of money, not like many, many people around who, who take credit cards, right? They owe, they, they owe thousands. Then you take a mortgage, may Allah protect us, you owe thousands. And sometimes people die before they even pay their mortgage. Then may Allah protect us. What are they, how are they going to face Allah? May Allah protect all of us. Salama ibn al-Aqwa, he narrates, a dead person was brought to the Prophet وسلم, for the janazah, by the way, so that he could lead the funeral prayer for him. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked, is he in debt? When the people replied in negative, he led the funeral prayer. Another person was brought and he asked, is this person in debt? They said, yes. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, refused to lead the prayer. 
and said, lead the prayer of your friend Abu Qutada, said, O oh, Allah's messenger, I undertake to pay his debt. So another Sahabi came forward and said, I'm going to pay his loan off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then led his funeral prayer. Are you realizing how strong this is? Are you all understanding? Now, sincerely make dua that if you had have debts, may Allah allow you to get rid of them. May Allah give you the strength and, and give you the life that you pay your debts in your lifetime. Imagine if Prophet ﷺ was among us and we were to die and he would refuse to pray our janazah. Ya Allah. The audacity of us to take loans and the audacity of us to have a certain lifestyle and for that we will take money and, and sometimes that we also on interest, may Allah protect us. And the next is rijal. And I know in another narration, it is وَقَهْرِ rijal. It is, um, what is meant by? I don't understand what you've, you've written, sister. وَغَلَبَتِ um, rijal. And in another narration, it is وَقَهْرِ rijal. So either way. Now, what is غَلَبَتِ rijal? غَلَب, غَلْبَ means to become overpowered. Somebody subjugates you. Somebody suppresses you. And I'm not going to name the countries. You all are watching the news. You know what is happening in different parts of the world. May Allah is the, the suffering of our Muslim brothers and sisters. And, and take a moment to think, to say thank you to Allah. Say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, you protected me from that. Yes. So, you know, غَلَبَتِ rijal is overpowering of men. So some people come and treat you unjustly. And what happens is, the, and the person who is being treated unjustly, uh, they are left with a feeling of weakness and humiliation. Yeah, dala dain. Dala means you know over is something that makes you crooked, bends your back. Dain um, is debt, money you, you owe. Wa and ghalaba overpowering. Rijal is men. Okay, so all of you, I think we all share the share the feelings of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are going through a difficult time, who are being overpowered. Overpowered meaning people do bad things to them. People beat them. People arrest them. People are humiliating them. That is what overpowering. They will tell. They will talk down on you. They will give you no respect. They will make sure that your self respect is crushed down. This is overpowering. Yes, like abuse. Yes. But even more worse, you know, watch the news and then you will know what is happening. What am I talking about? Yeah. So that is why Prophet ﷺ already taught us a dua. Look at that. How, you know, I, I, I often think when I'm teaching you these laws, I say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this Prophet of yours is rahmatul lil alameen, his mercy to the world. Isn't he mercy? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's taught us all these du'as that these things can happen to any one of us. So seek Allah's protection before time. Ya subhanallah, the sister is saying, Bala idain. Ya Allah, protect me from being overburdened by, uh, by debts. So I don't have, I don't, I, I, I don't owe money to people. Okay, and then Wala bitir rajal, yes, sister rightly said, violence. So therefore, we as a believer constantly need to recite this dua, constantly. I, I took three days of your precious time. I'm, I apologize for that. But please understand, internalize this dua. Okay? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazl wal-ajzi wal-kasal wal-jubni wal-bukhl wa-dala'i al-dayni wa-ghalabati al-rijal وَضَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ وَغَلَبَتِ الرِّجَالِ Yeah, because you see the times that me and you are living, we need this dua more than ever. We have matters that cause us distress. We have matters that make us anxious. Yeah, 
We have enemies attacking us from every side. So we seek Allah's help and protection in our religious matters and in our worldly affairs. Amin, Ya Rabbi. Sheikh Uthaymeen, he explains in his sharh, in his explanation, he says that the saying of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from being heavily in debt, from being heavily in debt and from being overcome by men, what it means is, you know, people taking out a big loan and not being able to repay. Rijal means men and getting into trouble because of it. You see, um, in this hadith, that there is an evidence, this is a point that we all need to learn from this hadith, that a person should be aware of, you should be aware of taking a loan. Because when you take a loan, you're really enslaving yourself. You're humiliating an honored person. So you're an honored person, you get humiliated because you're taking a huge chunk and then you're not able to repay. What are they gonna do? They're gonna talk to you in a, in a different tone. That is why Prophet ﷺ never encouraged a person who wanted to get married to take a loan. Yeah, like there, there was a man who came to Prophet ﷺ and wanted to ask him, you know, if you can get me married. Prophet ﷺ asked, do you have anything? He replied that he had nothing but except the lower garment that he was wearing. He وسلم, said, what will she do with your waist sheet? Meaning the woman that you're gonna marry, what is she gonna do with that piece of cloth? You know, if you have it, she will have nothing over her. And if she wears it, you will have nothing. So he وسلم, then asked him to give her a gift, even if it was only an iron ring, okay? And the person, subhanAllah, could not even afford an iron ring. Then the Prophet ﷺ, it's a long hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said to him, I marry you to her based on what you know of the Quran. Meaning, Prophet ﷺ did not say, go and get a loan, right? Because getting a loan is a way that you are going, honored person will be humiliated. A free person will become imprisoned, right? So we all should take, extreme care when we're taking out loans, right? Sometimes people take out loans to look rich, isn't it? Because you want to have that flashy car. You want to have that house. So you want to get that extension done so that people say that you have, you know, you, you, you have a beautiful house, right? Or, you know, the young girls, they want that dream wedding. They want a horse ridden carriage. They want that fairy tale Cinderella wedding. And then they want um, to take loan out. You really think you should? And whereas the Prophet ﷺ has sought refuge against it. Yeah, because you can have, you can do that, but when it's repayment time, say something happens to you, you fall ill and you're not able to to pay for it, then what's gonna happen? They come and auction the things in your house? Majority of the time, it is the other person. The one who is giving you the loan gets the upper hand. Yeah? And this makes the person who took the loan out feel overpowered. You see, therefore, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is combining the two here. Because this person can't repay. All of you, I'm sure you know about bailiffs. When they come to your house and they say that you, have, you owe us this much amount of money. And they talk to you in a very strong tone. And where do you think all this is coming from, my dear sisters? Don't you think this is coming all from the diseases of the heart? Because I want to look a certain way. I want to maintain a certain status. I want to have all the wealth for myself. I don't want to show that what I am as a Muslim. But I want to follow my desires and I don't want to, and I feel lazy to perform obligatory acts. Right? I want to feel, I want to drown myself in my sorrows. 
I don't want to learn the knowledge of, the, uh, of our deen. And hence, I just like to be depressed and, and I'm happy to be on antidepressants. I'm, I'm failing to understand that this valuable time I have is I have to, either I can make it to Jannah or I can have nothing for myself. Yeah? So let's recite this dua again. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazan wal-ajzi wal-kasal wal-jubni wal-bukhl wa dala'i al-dayni wa ghalabati al-rijal wa dala'i al-dayni wa ghalabati al-rijal غلبت الديني، yeah غلبت الرجال، وضلع الديني، my my dear sister you got it wrong، وضلع الديني وغلبت الرجال، one more time and then we will test you for your word meaning. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن والعجز والكسل والجبن والبخل. وضلع الدين وغلبت الرجال الحمد لله um, before I um, test your word meanings let me just pass a message from the admin جزاكم الله خيرا for all those who uh, donated may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give you and increase you more in your risk on Friday, you have donated for Masjid in Ghana in Africa. In few hours time, the target was reached and the funds, subhanAllah, were raised. So this is a huge, Jazakumullah khairan from the admins. Please continue to support and raise funds in Ramadan. Uh, only, this is only in Ramadan that the funds are being raised. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a sadaqai jariya for you and your parents. Amin ya. Okay. Let's quickly go on. These are the transliteration and the, tran and the translation. And that's the hadith. Alhamdulillah, let's test you. Everybody ready? I'm gonna open the chats. Allahumma inni. Oh, indeed. oh, Allah, indeed, I, very, verily, I. A'udhu bika. I seek refuge in you. Okay, in you is important. Min al hammi. Ham is for the future or the, pre uh, the past? Future, well done, the worry. Well, hasani. Sorrow of the past. Okay, well done. Well, Ajizi. Well, Ajizi. Helplessness. Inability. Well, Kasali. Laziness. MashaAllah. Barakallah. Well, Bukhli. Well, Bukhli. Stinginess. Isoliness. Well done. Well, Jubani. Cowardice. This person is a coward. They don't, this is opposite of coward. Cowardice is opposite of someone who has a lot of courage. Okay? So the person who is courage, the jubni is opposite. Okay? And then today's oh, <laughs> I'm going wrong way. What is uh, uh, overpowered by men? Good, it's going the wrong way. Is Dain, remember Dain is debt, yes. So from being heavily in debt and from being overpowered by other men. Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all emotional and physical well-being. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal all the sisters who are here, who are on YouTube and who will listen to the class after the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal each one of you, heal your pain, be it a physical pain or 
be it a, a emotional or a, you're suffering from anxiety or depression, anything that you're experiencing, may Allah give you shifa, complete shifa. Um, ya Allah, we all ask you for your rahmah. Ya Allah, ease our worries. Ya Allah, ease our anxieties and burdens and replace them with peace and tranquility and hope and happiness. Ya Allah, give us the strength and the sabr to face the challenges that we have, that we all experience every single day, be it from the people around us or be it from, the, from, from our circumstances. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan the best of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to worship him in a manner that he is pleased with us. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka, 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 astaghf